Van Trump. I'm the account manager with uh, M33 Integrated Solutions. Thank you for joining us. Our topic today is Freight Classification 101, Thinking Outside the Box. I'm joined today by Scott Elder. Scott is the manager of our audit and pricing department. Our goal over the next 15 minutes or so is to help you navigate through the NMFC, also known as the National Motor Freight Classification. We could literally spend hours discussing this topic, but we know your time is valuable and limited, so we will focus on these five talking points. What is it and why is it important? Characteristics, how to calculate density, the classification index, which is comprised of 18 groups, and limitation of liability. So a little bit about the origin and history of um, the NMFC. The Interstate Commerce Commission created the NMFC after deregulation in the 1980s. The ICC was abolished in the mid-90s and the responsibility was transferred to the Surface Transportation Board, also known as STB. After that, the National Motor Freight Transportation Association, the NMFTA, took over the responsibility. So we're in the third generation of, of the NMFC. The standard is used in the industry that provides a comparison of commodities moving interstate, intrastate, and foreign commerce. The intent is to simplify the comparative evaluation of thousands of products moving in the marketplace today. So why is it important? Well, all negotiations begin somewhere, and this is the standard by which to begin. So I thought I'd throw in a, a cute little cartoon there to lighten up the, the mood a little bit. I'm sure you guys have felt this way from time to time. Many of you joined our webinar last month, given by Margaret Heron and Chris Colley, on bill of lading creation. So we thought it would be um, a good idea just to review the importance of notating the class, the NMFC, and the description on the BOL. So I wanted to, wanted to run through these real quickly. Application of classes. The shipper must use proper commodity word descriptions on the BOL. The NMFC item and appropriate sub number should be shown. Improper commodity descriptions open the door to unanticipated rate adjustments. In the event the carrier cannot determine the proper classification, they will assign a default class, which is usually 150. Commodities are subject to different class rates and dependent on, upon the density or density group. So show your density group. The carrier will use the lowest density class, classification when the density or the group is not provided. There are four characteristics of transportability. So commodities are grouped into one of 18 classes from a low of 50 to a high of 500. Class is based on an evaluation of four transportation characteristics, and these are listed as density, liability, handling, which is packaging, and stowability. Today we're going to focus on density and liability. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Scott, and I'll let Scott dive into the details. Okay. We're going to talk about density as it relates to classification. And class, or density, in a lot of cases, determines what your freight classification will be. The NMFTA categorizes a wide range of commodities as density products. So these density products uh, rely heavily on the density to determine what your classification will be. So below, I've, I've provided an example of how your rate per 100 weight or your rates will uh, uh, fluctuate based on what your class and density is. A class 50 product, which is your higher density products at 1,000 pounds uh, on the ZAR 10-1-2000 rate base would yield a weight per 100 weight of 25.99, uh, I'm sorry, $25.99 per 100 weight. 
the opposite end of the spectrum, class 500, which carries a lighter density at 1,000 pounds, would carry a rate per hundred weight of $213.38. So how does that translate into actual freight rates? Let's look at, it, at an example, uh, Richmond, Virginia to Atlanta, Georgia, one pallet of 1,000 pounds and a 50% discount. The class 50 net rate would be $129.95. At class 500, your net rate would yield $1,066.90. So you can see there's a huge variation there uh, by class. Looking at the uh, next slide, you can see the variance from class to class, and you can see how it steps up from one class to the other. Uh, your lowest rate per hundred weight being at class 50 and your highest at class 500. Um, so it's really important that you get the classification correct uh, when filling out your bill of lading uh, if you want to uh, be able to anticipate exactly what your freight charges or your freight rates will be. So Scott, can I ask you a question around the um, how this would apply, how density would apply toward cubic capacity and just a, a few talking points around being cognizant of um, pounds per cubic feet and how that would apply? Well, as you get into your lower density items, uh, anything usually but, uh, below six pounds per cubic foot run into the uh, potential of um, uh, incurring cubic capacity charges, uh, which also would affect your, uh, your freight rates uh, considerably. Um, so that yields itself to talking about how we actually calculate density. So we'll move on to the next slide. And there are four steps to calculating density. Step one being to know uh, the dimensions of your product. So you, you need to know the length, height, and width and inches of your product. And that's measuring the farthest point, including skids or other packaging. Step two, you would multiply those dimensions that you just gathered, length, height, and width. To, and that results in the total cubic inches of the shipment. Step three, divide the total cubic inches by 1,728, which is the number of cubic inches in a cubic foot, resulting in the cubic feet of the shipment. Step four, the final step is divide the weight, your total weight in pounds of the shipment by the total cubic feet, which would result in the pounds per cubic foot or density. So as an example, imagine a single skid weighing 500 pounds with dimensions of 42 by 48 by 48. We would multiply the 42 by 48 by 48 to come to 96,768 cubic inches. Divide your 96,768 cubic inches by 1,728 to yield 56 cubic feet. Finally, you would divide your 500 pounds by the 56 cubic feet to end at a density of 8.9 pounds per cubic foot. So shifting to limitation of liability next, uh, how is the liability de determined? Well, the maximum liability per pound per package, per package allowed is determined first by term determining the actual class as provided in the governing tariff or the FAK rating as set forth in the shipper's published tariff. Then by locating the applicable class and corresponding maximum liability provided for in the carrier's rules tariff. I've provided an example chart of what the carrier's limited liability chart looks like. I pulled this from RNL's rules tariff. It varies from carrier to carrier. To carrier. Um, I believe RNL actually places a little bit higher value on their lower um, class items, the class 50 to um, class 100 items. And a lot of the carriers will start at a 99 cent max value per pound. Typically, your lower classes carry a lower maximum, maximum value per pound. Your higher classes will carry a higher maximum value per pound. There are a couple of other factors impacting liability beyond the valuation providing the carrier's statement of maximum liability, and those items are, uh, can be the actual weight of the shipment at origin or the released value as stated in the National Motor Freight Classification. Uh, finally, excess liability coverage must be requested and stated on the bill of, bill of lading, um, and a maximum payout there is $100,000. So let me ask you a question, Scott. Um, 
where does it make sense to negotiate a liability limitation? Okay. Um, your main circumstance where this becomes important is when you're negotiating freight rates and incorporating an FAK. Uh, a lot of times you can be uh, you can negotiate an FAK to your detriment when it comes to uh, uh, covering liability on certain products. So let's let's say you know you've got an FAK that covers uh, most of your product and you know works out best for you in determining the, uh, your freight rates and decreasing the amount of money you're spending on freight spend. But you've got this one item that's uh, of a higher value that you would not want to fall into that FAK because of the limited liability of your FAK. Um, you would need to negotiate that on the front end along with the pricing to allow for that particular NMFC item to run at a higher class uh, to be excluded from your FAK in order to obtain the higher liability. That's a great point. So um, in conclusion, there's, there's basically two simple things to remember here, and that's to clarify, which is educating yourself on your product. Um, be accurate in your description. And then uniformity, and that's, that's being consistent. So we thank you today for your time. We hope you have found this webinar informative. If you have any questions um, about this topic, you can contact your account manager or you can reach out to me. I've left my contact information on this slide. Thanks and have a great afternoon.